Chapter 1. Meet Hilda. Self-sabotage is real. Let's say you've decided to start something spectacular. Brilliant. But almost immediately after you proclaim, I am going to, insert your goal here, you start hearing her voice. You're dreaming far too big for someone like you. You know you're going to fail. Why even try? They'll find out you're a phony, you know. Psst, this could never happen for you. People are going to laugh at you. Why can't you just be grateful? That's a really, really bad plan. You shouldn't have said that. Who do you think you are? You're not good enough. You don't want to. You don't know. You shouldn't. You won't. You can't. You suck. I know it ain't just me. You know this voice. You've heard it before. You may even be hearing it right now. And if you're like everyone I have ever met, the voice in your head already has some signature phrases designed to torture you. This voice is upsetting and pervasive. I like to call her Hilda. Hilda is the name I give to your irksome inner naysayer who constantly tells you how much you suck. She's the annoying internal personal saboteur inside your brain that tells you incessantly that you're not good enough. She jabs you in the ribs when she thinks you're getting too big for your britches. She takes note of all your past failures and sends you not-so-gentle reminders of those moments every time a new idea arises. She's the nagging, negative voice inside your brain that relentlessly picks away at your sense of possibility, your ambitions, your confidence, and your tenacity. She's the one with the disempowering messages who cunningly chips away at your potential. While you're shaking out dusty beliefs, creating fresh mindsets, and setting new and lofty goals— Hilda's in your head spewing nonsense to trigger self-doubt, self-consciousness, second-guessing, and defeat. Her sole job in your life is to keep you small, to keep you stuck, to keep you safe. Because she doesn't want you to get yelled at, or get burned, or embarrassed, or fail miserably, or get uncomfy in any way whatsoever. She loves to be comfortable. And unfortunately, she's really freaking good at getting her way. Why did I dub my inner critic Hilda? Because to me, it was the most ridiculous name I could think of, and it instantly ruined her credibility. Apologies to all who share her name. Feel free to call yours Jenny. It's only fair. Titles like the inner critic, or worse, the inner saboteur, are soft and frou-frou and professional-sounding and give her far too much power and credence. Instead, I opt for the absurd. If she were a Game of Thrones character, she would be addressed as Hilda, queen of the house of self-sabotage, keeper of the status quo, enforcer of mediocrity, chief fearmonger, and curator of defeatist thoughts and feelings. This naming ritual separates her fear-driven, twisted messages from my truth. It allows me to build a virtual wall between what I want and what she wants. That's just straight up logic, yo. Just because these messages reside inside of your brain doesn't mean this nonsense is true. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you either. You're perfectly normal. It's just some voice inside your head that's gathered a bunch of information from all of the situations, experiences, and people who have held you back in life and created this cesspool of suctum in your mind. How she operates. Why she's strong. Because you believe her. Because until now, you didn't know all of this noise was her, not you. She lives in your brain, so she must be telling the truth, right? And because you've proved her right over and over again, by following her rules, sabotaging your dreams, and staying small, she's won repeatedly. So when she pipes up, your Pavlovian response follows. Why she's wrong? Because you want more. Because you're a badass. Because no matter how much of your confidence she swallowed up in the past, you can always go out and find more. 
and because you've got evidence to the contrary of all her silly notions. Others have been able to do what you want to do, so it has been proven possible. Again, logic. What she says. Your Hilda is conniving and knows all the best ways to get under your skin. Hilda's job is to provide false and misleading evidence that these beliefs are founded. She twists your past experiences to reinforce these misguided beliefs. She fills your head with cynical nonsense, your thoughts, to remind you to feel a certain way, your feelings, which then dictates your next move, your actions. When she pulls all those strings just right, the naysaying noise she plants in your brain makes you feel nervous and scared and embarrassed and uncertain and keeps you from taking any action. And when she wins, she smugly kicks back, completely satisfied that she's managed to keep you safe and sound and stuck. In my inexhaustible obsession to understand Hilda and her self-sabotaging ways, I have surmised that not all Hildas take the same form. But after coaching hundreds of audacious people over the last decade, I've noticed four very specific patterns we humans tend to follow in our adventures with self-sabotage. Or, to be more direct, we're all susceptible to Hilda's four BS beliefs. When you are about to do something that matters, Hilda will convince you of one or more of the following BS beliefs. I can't. I can't, Hilda, amplify self-doubt and defeatism. She makes you feel insecure and convinces you to question your capability. She attacks your confidence. I shouldn't. I shouldn't, Hilda, obsesses about the judgments of others. She makes you feel judged and convinces you to change your behavior to please other people. She attacks your possibilities. I don't know. I don't know, Hilda, perpetuates inertia and indecision for as long as humanly possible. She makes you feel stuck and convinces you to second-guess your every desire. She attacks your ambition. I don't want to. I don't want to, Hilda, justifies inaction and procrastination. She makes you feel unfocused and convinces you to avoid your goals. She attacks your tenacity. The first two BS beliefs strike at the heart of who you are. The second two combat the core of what you want. Ambitious people are almost always hearing nonsense from at least one of these Hildas. Some even manage to tolerate duets, trios, and even quartets of naysaying BS in unison. Demented Documentarian Hilda loves your personal history. She hangs out in your brain, filming every moment of your life. Every time you do anything that matters to you, she busts out her camera and captures every memory and emotion that goes along with it. She carefully files each of these experiences and memories away. But, like most documentary filmmakers, Hilda has a particular bias that is infused in your story. Seriously, Michael Moore and Morgan Spurlock got nothing on Hilda. She cuts and splices and amplifies the moments where you are at your worst. Whenever you are about to do something that makes her the least bit uncomfortable, she sets up a screening of your mental documentary to scare the crap out of you. If you've ever had a moment where you've backed down, oh, she knows the transcript of that moment. If you've ever failed and landed dramatically on your ass, yep, she knows that play-by-play too. Hey, remember this time when you embarrassed the crap out of yourself? Yeah, that's what this choice will do. Hey, remember how bad this moment was? No? Allow me to revisit it and make you feel like that again. Hey, remember what your mother used to say to keep you from making a mistake? I'm just going to put that track on a loop so you hear it over and over and over again, in your mother's voice no less, to remind you to behave yourself and not upset your dead mother. Enough already. Hilda shows up for your most triumphant moments, too. She just hides those archives away in the deep recesses of your mind, often downplaying their significance. 
Sometimes she even makes you feel bad for having a sense of pride, lest you get too big for your britches. But Hilda means well. Wait, what now? Believe it or not, Hilda means well. She's as mean as they come, but she does have the best intentions. You see, her full-time job is to keep you safe, comfortable, out of harm's way. And it's an important job. Seriously. If you just listen to her, you'd never take big risks. You never have to face your fears or ruffle anyone's feathers. You would never screw something up or get burned by the bitterness of disappointment. You would never find yourself curled up in the fetal position on your bathroom floor crying an ugly cry after a massive gnarly public failure. That's all she wants for you. In fact, you'd never fail again. You wouldn't succeed either, but that's beside the point. That's it. That's Hilda's entire purpose for existing. If you would just heed Hilda's messages, you would be able to stay snug and secure in your cozy little comfort zone from here until eternity. And while I know that sticking to your comfort zone is not good enough for you, demonstrated by the fact that you're listening to this very book, you have to realize that this voice in your brain is just trying to do her job. Yes, her tactics and methods are atrocious, without question, but we've got to believe her heart is in the right place. You're considering something risky, and that freaks her out, and she's scared. She's scared for you. Your feelings, your confidence, your ambition, your willpower, your integrity, your humility, and your heart. She wants to protect you from any and everything that poses a threat to one or more of those bits of you. The problem lies in the fact that most of what's most treasured and valuable in our lives sits squarely outside of the safe zone. But Hilda doesn't care. She's scared and she's ready to fight any threat that comes her way. Now that you understand her motivations, perhaps some empathy is in order. How we're going to shut her up. Okay, we can be empathetic now, but let's be real. Hilda needs to be stopped. What would it feel like if you tackled challenges and obstacles with confidence in yourself and your abilities? If you forged your own path in life and said to hell with what others think? If you charged through life with decisive and deliberate action toward your goals? If you finished what you started consistently with tenacity and determination? And if you got out of your own damn way and unleashed your badassery onto the world? all because you didn't participate in the self-sabotage society anymore? We're going to name her. We're going to write down her nonsense. We're going to determine how your particular Hilda tends to sabotage you, and then we're going to undermine her motives and tactics. We're going to inject a little logic into her craziness. Apply a little method to her madness, if you will. We're going to smack her down with snappy comebacks that put her in her place. Bottom line, we're going to squash her self-sabotaging ways with some hardcore audacity. Name your Hilda. In case you're wondering, no, you don't have to use the name Hilda to describe your inner naysayer. I am not the boss of you. Other experts have dubbed the inner critic with interesting terms. Seth Godin gets all sciency and calls her your reptilian lizard brain. Rick Carlson, author of Taming Your Gremlin, likes to think of her as a fuzzy little monster that can't be fed after midnight. But calling her some sort of creature doesn't work for me. She's not a gremlin or a troll or a pissed off fairy. She's a bitchy little human that's getting in my way. Since Hilda is part of the human experience, she's basically human in my book. Get it? Ha ha. Humanizing Hilda is important. Simply calling the voice in your head something highfalutin like the inner critic or the inner saboteur only gives that negative Nancy in your brain more credentials. So let's give her, or him, a name. About half my clients over the years who resonated with the concept of Hilda have stuck with the name. The other half preferred to give her a new name that resonated more. She's been dubbed Gertrude, Agnes, Stella, Myrna, Eleanor, Olga, Psycho, Sydney, Beulah, 
Shrilda, Mildred, Ethel, Maud, Phyllis, Herman, Henderson, Heinrich, Nick, Louise, Mr. Picklebottom, one of my personal favorites, and many, many more. Even negative Nancy is up for grabs. Name your inner critic whatever the heck you want. The possibilities are endless. But pick a name. For the men listening to this book, which is probably about 14% of my readers based on super accurate data analysis conducted by me, you know, guessing almost arbitrarily, feel free to choose a man or a woman as your inner critic. In my coaching practice, about half the men I've worked with have just stuck with Hilda. The choice is yours. Got it? Good. Now that you've named your Hilda, you just need some real tangible tools to help you figure out why you self-sabotage, how you self-sabotage, why you actively self-sabotage when you're keenly aware that you are self-sabotaging, and what the hell you're going to do about it. I'm going to give you some specific tested techniques and mindset shifts to help you figure out why in the world you stand in the way of your own greatness, of your own audacity. I'm going to delve into stories of mine and of my clients to share with you exactly why the self-sabotage thing is truly the biggest obstacle we face in the pursuit of our wildest dreams. By the time you finish this book, you'll be better able to identify where and why your Hilda shows up. More importantly, you'll be much more aware when she does and will more quickly and easily differentiate her defeatist nonsense from your truth and you'll arm yourself with coaching techniques to combat Hilda's despicable tactics. So let's go.